history of Microsoft. It was the year 1977. The much-awaited space opera Star Wars became an instant success with robot co-stars C-3PO and R2-D2. New York City celebrated the completion of their new landmark, the World Trade Center, and sadly, the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, died at age 42. It was the year 1977, and while the U.S. began four years with its 39th president, on February 3, 1977, Paul Allen and Bill Gates finally executed an official partnership. That summer, Microsoft introduced its second language product, Fortran 80, at a price of $500. And the Tandy Corporation announced the TRS-80 Model 1 microcomputer with a 4K memory retailing for $600. Meanwhile, Apple, another small tech company, released their second version of a personal computer called the Apple II. And the market was growing as Commodore business machines hit the market with the personal electronic transactor computer, otherwise known as PET. A few months later, on September 13th, Microsoft received new computers from Commodore, Radio Shack, and Texas Instruments. The Altair uh, Basic comes out in 75. And the next big wave is a set of three machines that come out in 77. Uh, this, the TRS-80, the Apple II uh, that we have over here that came out actually without the discs at first, uh, and a machine called the Commodore PET. And those were low cost, and yet they, were, they weren't kits or anything. They came out prepackaged, and they looked like they would really ignite the volume in the market. And all three of them went out and did very well. Um, several of them, when they first shipped, had basics that the company themselves did. This had a, a level one basic that actually Steve Leininger uh, enhanced off of Lee Chim Wang's uh, Tiny Basic. But they knew it was pretty inadequate, and so they licensed the uh, Basic from us that was built into all these machines thereafter, and they called it Level 2 Basic, and we even left some hooks in there so we could sell uh, a, a Basic called Level 3 Basic that went even further. So Radio Shack, with its distribution and its name, uh, set the market on fire. Apple, because they really went out to computer dealers and did a, a good job, far better than people like uh, the MITS guys and the Insight guys were doing. They really thought of this as a market where they had to develop the channel and do new things. And the Commodore machine, the PET, was actually the most aggressively priced machine and had, had some very innovative things. So these machines drove the market and uh, uh, eventually by uh, a year after they were out, all of them had our basic built in. So you could even move programs back and forth between the, these machines because of the, the compatibility that we had built in there. With new momentum and equipment, on September 26th, Microsoft expanded to three more offices in their Albuquerque building. Well, Paul uh, and I were the founders, uh, but uh, we, during the time we were in Albuquerque, which was from 75 to 78, ended up with about 16 people. Uh, this is a picture we took towards the end of that time, myself and Paul. Uh, this is Gordon Letwin, who uh, had worked and did the uh, Heath Basic, Benton Harbor Basic. And then he was upset when they were licensing my Basic instead. He came to work for us and did some incredible work. Uh, Mark McDonald, actually, our first employee. Anyway, these were the, uh, other than uh, Andrea, who wrote the manuals, and Marla, who uh, helped keep the books. Uh, I was the sales department, contract department, and everybody else here uh, were programmers. We all wrote an immense amount of code. You know, these were, were exciting years. The number of new machines coming out uh, were, pretty, were pretty dramatic. Our offices were here in uh, uh, fancy Albuquerque up on the eighth floor of, of this building here. Uh, Albuquerque was great. There weren't many distractions there, but it, was hard to recruit people as we we tried to grow. It was the year 1977. The median income in the United States was over $13,000, and Microsoft's revenue went up significantly this year to over 380,000 bucks. But a headcount of nine and a few more offices was just the tip of the iceberg for a company that was just getting started.